Olá! Aqui fala Marisa Silva Rocha e estou aqui um prazer estar com o Ruben Gonzalves de Faro Portugal. Olá. E o Ruben é uma artista fantástica, único e extraordinário. E hoje vamos falar sobre a arte dele, também dos diferentes eventos, exhibits que ele já a lançou. Obrigada por estar aqui com hoje. Obrigado eu. Nós, a má conversa. Obrigado eu. E vou tentar o meu melhor falar em português contigo. Mas eu, felizmente, o Ruben sabe falar inglês perfeitamente sabe falar o português perfeitamente e também sabe falar o espanhol perfeitamente. Um, e vamos falar um pouco disso ao fim, no fim, mas agora podes dizer um pouco sobre um, quem tu és, onde tu és e como é que começaste a participar em produções artísticas e quais são os mediums que tu utilizas nas tuas artes. Okay. Uh, quem, quem sou, isso é uma questão muito filosófica, não é? Mas, um, ok, sou o Rubén Gonçalves, sou um artista uh, algarvio, do, do, do Algarve, em Portugal, uh, sou de Quarteira, uh, nasci em 1997, portanto, tenho 23 anos, e já produzo, é assim, produzo a sério, desde os meus 18, 19 anos de idade, mas sempre, 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 toda a minha vida tive uma afeção pelo, pelo desenho, pela pintura, pela música também, e pronto, já toquei, já tive bandas, e pronto, desde 2018, não, desde 2015, desculpa, desde 2015 que eu sou, que eu, pronto, eu entrei mais a fundo no mundo artístico. Eu tirei um curso em 2015, no, entrei em 2015 e saí em 2018, um curso de artes visuais na Universidade do Algarve, em Faro, onde explorei muitas técnicas, desde desenho à pintura, escultura, vídeo, instalação, de tudo um pouco, Olá. trabalhos digitais, fotografia, fotografia analógica, Muita coisa, mas pronto, entretanto fui descobrindo mesmo o que é que mais me interessa, não é? E as coisas que mais me interessam neste momento são mesmo é a pintura, uh, o desenho e depois ocasionalmente eu também trabalho na, em, coisa, em trabalhos de escultura, de instalação e posso fazer um ou outro vídeo também, como já fiz peças com vídeo também, não tenho exposições. Uh, diz? Fantástico! Podes um, explicar mais sobre diferentes eventos que já tiveste sobre o teu arte? Ok, uh, eu comecei, a, a minha primeira exposição foi em 2018, era uma exposição coletiva, eram os três artistas, a exposição chamava Substance e foi em Faro, no IPDJ de Faro, quem é do Algarve deve conhecer. Um, foi com dois artistas, a Isabel e Andrade, e o Bruno Seris, dois meus colegas de curso, e, e o curador da, da exposição também foi um colega meu, Rodrigo Rocha. E nós pusemos, eu na altura pus duas peças, são, é o, se não me engano, se forem ao meu Instagram, é o meu último post, quer dizer, vai, é o primeiro post que eu, que eu tenho no Instagram, portanto tenho que dar scroll down até ao final para ver o post. E tenho lá as duas peças que eu pus nessa exposição, é assim, tem assim um chão verde, vê se dá para perceber logo o que é que é. Um, pronto, e nessa exposição por acaso pus um... Desculpa, diz? Eu tenho que ver isso no teu Instagram. Um, este... Eu sou grande fã do teu Instagram. E Obrigado. Também estou aqui a notar que no teu Instagram também gostas de tirar fotos da natureza, sim? Isso também é... Ah, isso, isso, é só um, isso é um hobby. Isso é um hobby que eu tenho. Isso é outra conta. Yes. <risos> é uma conta que eu só ponho fotos quando me apetece, sem qualquer, sem qualquer coerência, sem qualquer, é só mesmo uma, um passatempo mesmo, é só um passatempo, eu, eu gosto de tirar foto, às vezes um pormenor que eu acho interessante, tiro foto, às vezes só com o telemóvel, às vezes saio com a máquina mesmo para tirar fotos, 
mas pronto, não penso que isso seja, isso não é realmente o meu trabalho, não, o meu trabalho é, é pintura, é escultura, é instalação, é o desenho, não é? Sim. Mas pronto, por acaso essas fotos têm, acaba por haver uma ponte em relação a esse assunto da natureza, porque é realmente um dos focos também do meu trabalho artístico, um, pronto, a relação entre o homem e a natureza. E é então... Verdade. Também tem uh, temas que eu gostei como fadista, eu uhum. vi que as suas, uh, as suas produções artísticas eram tipo um, escuras e, e faz a pessoa pensar e depois quando eu falei contigo, um, disseste-me a mim que os teus temas que são breves reflexões de existências, também, uhum. em particular, o foco particular nas temas de morte e da finalidade. Fin Estou a dizer certo? Finalidade, sim, finalidade. Sim. Certo. Podes explicar mais sobre as tuas temas que tu gostas um, focar? Ter uhum. a tua foco? I'm yeah. not saying it right, your focus on? Não, eu estou dizendo, ok. Yeah. Yeah. <risos> um, sim, uh, temas em que eu me foco, eu foco muito sim, e há, há mesmo, existe esse, mesmo esse ponto com, com o fado, não é? Por causa da questão da melancolia e da nostalgia. Estão ali os passarinhos a, a cantar. Wow! Estão cantando o fado para nós, o fado da natureza, that's beautiful. Uh -huh. <risos> um, Sim, é, é realmente uma ponte que existe entre o fado e, e os temas que eu trabalho, não é? A questão da melancolia, da nostalgia, até, até a questão do... De, na, numa parte em que eu falo da natureza também, posso também referenci, referenciar o, o mar como algo muito relevante, o oceano, algo muito relevante para o, para o meu trabalho e também acaba por relacionar-se com o fado, não é? Que é do mar, por aí fora. Meu Deus, eles vão se calar. Perdoa. São canários. Um, mas sim, esta questão do... Eu tenho peças até em que eu já, já me foquei bastante. Tenho, uma peça, tenho duas peças que se chamam Santiago 1 e 2, que eu expus em 2019 na exposição Oblivion, na 289, na, na Associação 289, onde eu coloquei lá essas duas peças e essas duas peças também falam um pouco e baseiam-se muito no, no texto, no livro do Hemingway, o, o Velho e o Mar. E então eu acabo por falar também um pouco, pronto, o Santiago era o personagem principal do livro, é o pescador, o velho, e então uma, uma temática que realmente aborda, é tanto abordada no fato como eu abordo no meu trabalho, não é? E então acho, acho relevante falar nisso, não é? Depois outras questões, a morte é realmente um, um dos focos maiores do meu trabalho, tanto que eu até trabalho com certos materiais que acabam por, ou certas, certos objetos que acabam por levar-nos a essa ideia, não é? Como por exemplo a maioria das minhas pinturas tem cinza e carvão, e pronto, cinza, neste caso obviamente não são de pessoas, não é? Mas, mas a, a cinza representa a morte, a cinza representa a morte, e, quase que diretamente, e pronto, isto é cinza de lareira, não é? Aquilo já foi, aquilo já foi algo, aquilo em princípio já, já foi uma árvore, não é? E o carvão que eu também utilizo, a maioria das vezes é carvão vegetal, tal como tenho aqui nestes desenhos, assim, um, e o carvão vegetal também é a mesma coisa, não é? O carvão vegetal é madeira queimada, e então... Pronto, eu, eu foco-me muito nessa questão e acaba por ligar a natureza e a morte, e são duas temáticas que eu realmente utilizo muito. Eu já fiz peças com urnas, por exemplo, eu tenho uma peça que expus em, se não me engano, foi na exposição Verão Danado, em 2018, se não me engano, no verão, sim, Verão Danado, um, e, a, e nessa exposição eu expus uma peça chamada Requi, Requiem, que é uma palavra lati, em latim, não é? E, e essa, essa peça, pronto, é um, uma, uma espécie de um pote de cinzas que tem duas asas de, de uma donzelinha, que é uma espécie de um, liblinha, uma, 
Dragonfly. Yeah. Yeah. <risos> um, e pronto, são duas asas que eu encontrei. Eu encontrei o corpo todo, mas entretanto só consegui mesmo ficar com as asas. Então, enquanto expus, eu expus as asas dentro do, no meio da cinza e aquilo faz como uma espécie de urna para um memorial, como se guarda as urnas de um, com as cinzas de um familiar, não é? E, e pronto, e acaba por ser um tema recorrente no meu trabalho. A música também é um tema recorrente no meu trabalho. Muitas, aliás, praticamente todas as pinturas de grandes dimensões que eu faço, eu acabo por utilizar, eu acabo por me inspirar em música que eu ouço. E a maioria das vezes é música como jazz, uh, música clássica, fado, como por exemplo ouvi ontem enquanto estava a pintar uma tela. Sim. Uh, música tradicional chinesa. Uau! Uh, sim, porque o meu trabalho acaba por também ser uma espécie de meditação, especialmente quando eu estou a pintar. É uma espécie de terapia meditacional, momentos em que eu estou sozinho e... É verdade. Estou só eu e a tela, não há nada nos meus pensamentos, é tudo muito intuitivo e... Tanto, por isso é que o som acaba por ser um bom catalisador para o meu... Para a obra, não é? E para o meu movimento. Todo 100%. Um, para mim, eu estou a aprender muitas coisas novas sobre o Ruben Ois, que uhum. ele gosta imenso de música e que ele sim, também sou apaixonado. bandas, eu não sabia isso. Talvez num outro episódio, talvez pudemos falar um pouco sobre isso, porque aqui na Má Conversa somos um programa que gostamos de falar imenso sobre arte e também de música hum. e cultura em geral. E também uma coisa que talvez não sabes sobre mim, eu também pinto, eu também adoro pintar. Sério? E, e também comecei um, apenas com 16, 17, 18 anos ali um, uhum. e todos os dias eu pintava, todos os dias. Para... Ótimo, incrível. Sim, apenas dois anos, todos os dias. E também eu penso igual como tu, um, em inglês, eu, eu vou falar um pouco em inglês, desculpa. Ok, ok. Uh, Podes continuar a falar em português? Um, our audience, they understand English and Portuguese, so fortunate for me that if I don't know how to explain something, it's good yeah. that I can talk in English. But I do <laughs> agree with what you're saying, that um, it's kind of a therapy for you. It is a release. Um, Definitely. You are painting, you, it's just you and your quadro. It's just you and the canvas, or it's just you yeah. and the paper, whatever it is that you're utilizing, because I know that you not only um, paint on canvases or use canvases, but you also use paper and you also use different mediums to correct. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I I explore a lot of different materials actually. Uh, so, something uh, a thing that's starting to to get in my work now. Uh, I'm just no, I just started speaking in English. <laughs> um, okay, I'm sorry, I did that to you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I'll just go for it. Uh, a thing that just started getting in my work in the last, I would say, one, one and a half years is um, clay. I've been starting to make a lot of pieces using clay, yeah. Yes. Actually, one of them is at the exhibition that I have on right now um, in, in, my, in, my, not in my hometown, but in the town where I grew up, uh, Lola. I have an exhibition there, and um, that one of one work with the uh, clay I have there, and uh, yeah, I've been uh, exploring a lot, a lot of materials. This painting behind me, the big one, this one right here, yes. uh, it's made on wood, on a wood structure that I found. Wow. I just found it, grabbed it, and painted it. I was about to. Yeah, ask if you want to see, I'll just, I'll just do this. I knew it. I had a feeling. Okay, that is interesting. I have posted it, I think, a, a few months ago. Yes, um, and I was going to ask you this because mm -hmm. I too like to paint on different surfaces. So yes. I like to paint on wood, I like to paint on, you're going to think this is probably weird, but I absolutely love to paint on cardboard. I know. That's kind of okay, okay. I, I, have, I have done it too. I have done it too, yeah. Um, so I like cardboard, wood. I like, I've done metal. I don't really care for metal, 
but it is an interesting thing. Um, okay. I've, I've played metal, but that's different. <laughs> <laughs> I've sang metal and that's a little bit different, but um, yeah, but I also just like to do a regular canvas. Um, mm -hmm. But I, my preferred medium was always acrylic. So for you, I'm learning today that you use charcoal, which is in the natural form yes. when you burn your wood. So that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Also I, I not always burn my own wood, but I, I, I also buy, uh, but, but it's also ve vegetal, vegetal charcoal. It's not artificial charcoal. That's cool. Sometimes I use that one too, but that's when I want to have like really dark tones. I use the, the artificial one, the manufactured one. It's probably a different uh, texture, right? And it comes out with a different... Mm -hmm. It comes out darker, definitely way darker. And it's more controlled because the, the vegetable charcoal, or I don't know how you call it, but the I'm just telling you. The of the charcoal is a bit uh, more vibrant than the wood. And it's, it's an informal thing. It's like, it, it's all messy because it's just a bit of wood that's yeah. burned. So the other one is a stick, so it's more, it's easier to control, obviously, on smaller details. Yes, exactly. So, um, so me, I was more acrylic. So what are you? Are you more oil? Are you, I know you like to do, um, to draw, but what about for the paint? Do you use acrylic or do you use oil? What is the one so that... So basically, basically on my bigger works, what I usually do is I, I use like a big, a big, uh, a big amount of materials actually. So I'm just gonna say them all. Uh, I use enamel painting, which is like a kind of a industrial paint, mm -hmm. like the ones you use in the walls, basically. Wow. It's it's basically wall paint, basically. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's industrial painting. And then I use um, charcoal also for the for the paintings. I use the ashes and I mix ashes with glue to make some kind of a, a paste, a, Te a really textured paste. Yeah. And um, I use that and I also use um, uh, pigment made out of um, iron oxide. It's an iron oxide pigment in dust that I use in my works like that painting has it in blue, but mostly I use it in, in black. Very cool. And, uh, and some tones of red too, but I've, I've also used dirt for that. Because so, I, 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 sorry? Where did you learn that technique? That's pretty different. Um, it kind of happened. It, it kind of happened. Like an experiment. It wasn't experiment. planned. It, it just happened while I was painting. Nice. Like. But basically, it's a weird thing. I can actually tell you that story. Because uh, I was like, I, I was starting to... No, no, I can, I can, you can just go on in English until the end if you want. If it's easier for you, that's all right. Um, I'll just go on in English. Come on. Are those your canaries, by the way? Uh, sorry? Are those your canaries, by the way? Yes, two of them, a oh, male and a female. Cool. Yeah, yeah, they have eggs at the moment, so that's right. Why the the male one is really agitated at the moment? Yes, because she's she's taking care of the eggs and he's bringing her food. Yes, and I have been singing for a very um, brief amount of time in my life, uh, and my father, uh, the one that's actually painting all the time every day now since yeah. uh, April or May, he began during this whole quarantine. Um, mm -hmm. that's besides the point, like my, the canaries that we had, my father was totally in love with those canaries. So I've, I've experienced canaries before, <laughs> but yours are very talkative, very cute, but they're giving us a little yeah. break right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. About that story I was going to tell you, um, yeah. that basically I, I was going through a rough period in my life actually at that time. And I. I was working on, I don't actually have anything online of works before that one work that basically made me click. Mm -hmm. I had one work that made me click and actually that work doesn't exist anymore. It got destroyed. It got destroyed. That one got destroyed, doesn't exist anymore. Why like did it get destroyed or how did it get destroyed? 
Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. Okay. I'll, start with, I'll get there. So basically, I was, go, I was going through a rough period in my life. I was having a lot of problems, like family problems and other things. And yeah, back then, basically, I was doing some kind of, I was trying to find my way in the arts. I was still not knowing what I really liked to do, so I was just exploring. And I was thinking too much for the works. I was like, I was trying to make like really specific and really direct concepts to the things and everything. I had to have like a big three page um, text to explain and everything. And it was, it was, I was getting tired of that. And you were getting overwhelmed with that. Yeah, I was totally getting overwhelmed by that. And so what, what I just figured out is like, I'm just gonna, just gonna paint something without thinking. I'm just gonna get a big roll of paper. And it was like a, a really big one. It was like five or six meters. So that's, that's pretty big. And I just grabbed the glue, uh, cause I just, I just grabbed what I had basically with me. And it was craft paper, those uh, like, like this one, like brown, yeah, craft paper. And uh, basically, yeah, I was, uh, I grabbed a big roll of that. I throw it in the ground and I just grab a, uh, it was like a, a broom, an old broom. Wow. I grab the glue, I throw it, I start spreading the glue with the, with the broom and I throw some pigments on top. That pigment I told you about, the iron oxide. Yes. And I throw it in there and I start rub, rubbing and everything in, in really interesting image came out and I was and I felt good after it because I really it was really th therapeutical because I didn't think at all while I was painting I was just jumping on top of it like from one side to the other one and making kind of like a dance while I was painting it and yeah basically when I finished I was really happy with the with the result so I just left it there to dry outside <laughs> so you're you're kind of seeing where this is going now. <laughs> oh, no, you're animal and something. No, no, it was. I was actually afraid of that. I was actually afraid of the cat ruining it. Ruining yeah. It. And uh, no, it actually didn't happen. Um, I, but I had to leave the house because I had to go to another city with my mother to take care of something. Oh no! And we what we used to live with my grand. Word? We used to live with my grandfather, which uh, has already passed away uh, two years ago. Oh. And uh, yeah, this was like three years ago, I think. So it wasn't long before he passed away. And uh, it was 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, basically we were, we were there and we left the house. And, I, and I, was, I told my grandpa, don't touch it, leave it. Uh, just don't let the cat go on top of it. Yeah. Just leave it. Leave it like that. Uh, I know there's some grains that are not glued. They're gonna come out. If the wind comes, they're gonna fly. I know that's gonna happen, but just leave it. Yeah. I'll take care of it when I get home. I'll, I'll clean the ground, I'll do everything. And when I got home, he cleaned that. He basically started brooming the, the painting and basically all the painting was completely different. Instead of some bits of pigment on top of the paper, I had a big, big, dark, um, I don't know how to call it, like, mamesha, mamesha, preta, enorme. Just one. Just one. And I, and I got so angry, so angry. Like I started screaming and I, I just, I basically destroyed the paper. I started. I was angry and like I cried, I cried, oh <laughs> and and yeah. So basically, I think that's the point where my work was the most ephemeral, <laughs> like ever, definitely, because it really died there. It really and, uh, died. So now, <laughs> do you practice your themes? Like it really came to life. It existed, and then it came to its. Finality. And it died, yeah, and it died an hour later. <laughs> and, well, and, then, and then I started exploring that technique for a while. And when I started exploring it, I started adding more materials. 
and I, a, a teacher of mine, she, she was, she was um, uh, understanding my work and understanding my themes and where I was going for. So she gave me a, an advice like, do you want to try and put another um, material that's also organic, like the charcoal that you're now starting to use, because like, then I started to use more charcoal, um, like destroying, tritur triturating the, the charcoal to make dust, yeah. to then throw it. And, and she told me like, why not try and put another material that gives you another shade, like some kind of gray or white, something to contrast with the black that you're using. Yeah. And yeah, then I, I came up with ashes and I started using ashes and then I started asking a friend of mine, she has a fireplace and she always keeps bags of ashes. And then she, she, gave, she gives them to me. I have like, I think like 20 this size. Wow. <laughs> in, in my studio, yeah, 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 it's huge. Okay. It's, it's like a big amount of ashes. And I use them all in, in basically all paintings, most paintings, I'm and gonna say. I have a question. I think you already did say this, Ruben, but when exactly yeah. did you start using the ashes? And uh, I know we're gonna start wrapping it up here because we have mm -hmm. a few more minutes to go. Um, yeah. But I just wanted to say, when exactly was that again? And, and then I have um, kind of a deep question for you since, okay. I mean, I, it looks like that you're not scared of going into that because your art is literally about death and about yeah. brief moments of us reflecting on our existence. So yes. um, I will ask you a deep question. If you don't want to answer it, you don't have to. Um, but do you think okay. that after your grandfather passed away, do you think that you went into this uh, theme of the art, your subject matter, a little bit deeper? Did you uh, dive a little bit deeper after he passed away? I don't really think so, no. Um, I actually think I started exploring that other theme I told you about, uh, about the sea and the ocean. That's I think awesome. that's the team that went, that I really started exploring after he passed away. Yeah. Cuz like death death I was already exploring yeah. since I would say a year before he passed away like I was far from expecting of course. Was there obviously. any significant thing that made you want to focus on that? Um I, I just think it's kind of an um, existential thing I have. Like, I think a lot about death. Okay. I, it's just a theme, but not in a, like, really dark and not in a more sad way. way. Yeah, not I think it uh, as a beautiful thing, actually. I think it, I think it in a poetical way. Yes. Um, I like to read about it. I think about it. I... I, I listen to a lot of music about it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just a thing that I, I, I'm really interested in. And, and that religious idea of, is there life after death? Or those kind of questions come up to me a lot of times because even if we don't believe or if we believe in something, we just really don't know. So it's, yeah. it's really interesting, but it's a question without an answer. Like, so you can think about it all your life because yes. there's no way you're going to answer to it unless you die and then you're not going to be able to answer unless it anyway. You so. decide, unless you decide that, hey, you know, I'm going to really believe in this and there you go. But like you said, we don't know for you certain. You still don't know. Exactly. You don't know for certain. But um, I would definitely like to explore this topic more. Because yeah. to tell you the very truth, I'm the same as you. I mean, we have a direct correlation with one another. Not only do we have a similarity because I am a Felicia Nicene father, but I too also am very spiritual in the fact that um, I connect very well with death as well and mm -hmm. with nature too. So I would definitely like to have you on again 
so that we can talk more in depth about this. And I know there's, there's happen, a lot yeah. more that I wanted to talk to you about because we want, we didn't get into it yet, but um, there was an exhibit that you had recently that I was very much interested in your art. And that's kind of what sparked me to ask you to come today. Okay. Um, so maybe we could talk more next time about your exhibit that you recently had, and as well as the, the death subject, um, not in a morbid way, but as in an artistic, uh, poetic yeah. matter. We can talk about yeah, that. let's call it a poetic matter. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. About the exhibition, I just want to warn if someone's listening, probably on the day that this is gonna come out, it's like if you listen to it, um, just go the day after because it's the last day that you can watch it. Oh, so, yes, 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 yes. You want to so, see a little bit of announcement? So it's gonna be done on the twentieth. Is that the day? No, because like this is oh, on the fifteenth. Yep. It finishes on the 16th, so the day after. Got it. So you, you yep. literally have, if you listen to this and you're interested, you literally have one day to see it. <laughs> so, and if you're around in Low Lake, because it's, it's not, Lake. it's really far from where you are, but. Isn't there a song from, that talks about Low Lake? That's, no, no. <laughs> no, that's just, that's Shakira. That <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm going to find the Lole song and I'm going to send it to you. Um, is that Tia, Tia Nika Lole? É isso, é isso. Ah, Tia Nika Lole, sim, sim, sim. <laughs> ok, yeah. então, amiga, muito obrigada de novo, mais obrigado, meu. por estar aqui conosco, a má conversa. E um, desculpa mais uma vez de um, mudar para português, inglês, português, mas. Não faz mal, não faz mal. <laughs> eu gosto que tu também falas o inglês perfeitamente e as pessoas vão entender perfeitamente o que é que um, nós falamos hoje. So thank Espero you so much again and I hope to have you on the air soon, um, hopefully next month or something like that. Not not too long mm -hmm. because I definitely want to talk with you about these subjects. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. Appreciate you and until next time, Ruben. Appreciate it. Thank you. Be safe. Thank you. Bye.